everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Riza Astrid and today I am with Sakina. She is my friend and my travel buddy. We've been to eight different countries together and she also has her own YouTube channel, Sexy Time, which I'll link down below. And she's also a teacher and multiple other things. If I had to mention all the things Sakina has achieved, we would be here for a very long time. But thank you so much, Sakina, for saying yes to being in this video with me. I just wanted to chat about our travels and things we've done and seen and our experiences and so forth. So I think we should start off by telling everyone where we've traveled to. What are the eight countries we've been? Okay, so I'm going to answer that question. Also, you might as well tell the people who tried filming this already. Oh, yeah, we are again. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. It's a very sensitive <laughs> thing. So sad, like, compared to how we, the previous video went. That's uh, I'll put the previous video right here in the middle so they can see how happy we looked. We tried filming this. We filmed for 40 minutes, only to realize that there's no sound in that video. And so I'm a bit bummed, but... I still want it's to okay. Have it. It's okay. It's okay. Reese's viewers came through and gave us enough questions for us to go through, so we'll go through them. Um, and these questions we haven't answered, so that's fantastic. Anyway, sidetrack. Uh, we've been to eight countries. We went to Abu Dhabi in 2015. That was our first travel trip together. Then we went to Madagascar in 2016. Went to Azerbaijan in 2017, 2018, over the New Year's period. Then we went to Tanzania in June. We went to Mozambique in July of 2018, so that's like the two trips are like very close together. And then just over this December, January period, we went to the Netherlands, Belgium, and France. Mm -hmm. What has been your favorite country so far and why? So my, my favorite country has been Madagascar mm -hmm. um, in 2016 because for personal reasons, just changed my perspective on everything. and. We, we were literally not in like a five-star hotel. We were literally in the middle of like red sand playing with seven rand bubbles. Mm -hmm. And I was having the time of my life. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like st stood there for like a second and I was like, this is what it's all about. Service above self. Like these kids are the absolute joy. Be all and end all. Love them. And I really, really enjoyed Madagascar for like a lot of, I like real lies, a lot of things. I'm joking. Like, it was just so good. So, so good. It's yours. Mine would definitely be Azerbaijan, just because we met so many great people. It was a place that we never thought we would go to. Like, I don't even know where it is on the map. And I've been there and came back and it's been three years already. <laughs> and I still don't know where it's on the map. And I have friends there, which is crazy. But it was just an, an unforgettable experience. The food was great. The sights were incredible. You got to see snow for the first time, which was cool to see you experience that for the first time. So, um, what was your least favorite? Uh, my least favorite was Belgium. Mm -hmm. uh, so we went to Ghent, Belgium. We were only there for a few hours. Um, for a lot of re <laughs> for a lot of reasons, I didn't like it. The fact that like we didn't get experience, I feel we didn't get experience Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, but for what we did experience, I didn't enjoy. Like the people were not nice. Um, I don't know what's up with that. They were just not nice. I was just trying to buy some kofurkis or whatever from, <laughs> and I was standing, I think I was standing with your brother and it was just not nice to us. And I was like, it's such a difference because you're in South Africa and yeah, like, and all the other places you've been to really, it's like, hello, like mm. a sm smile or something, <laughs> you know, and nothing. So I didn't like that. What didn't you like? I don't think there's a specific country that I didn't enjoy. I can't really think of it right now. But I think the last trip was very rushed because we saw so many places. Um, like we went to the Netherlands, Belgium, Paris, mm -hmm. and it just felt like so... And there wasn't really time to really sit and enjoy the places because we were always thinking, okay, what's next? What's coming up next? And I like more the style of traveling that we've done before where we've gone to one place and stayed at one place for like a week and then really got to know the place. Like Azerbaijan started feeling like home because we were there for so long and the people down the road at the corner shop knew us and they went from 
being like, who are these people? And staring at us in like, not disgust, but just like, who are you? Curious. Yeah, it's curiosity. Like to pure, like, hello. And I mean, they didn't even speak, obviously they didn't, they didn't speak English and we didn't speak Azerbaijani. But by the end of the week, they were trying to communicate with us a little bit more. And it was just amazing. I mean, the one experience that I'll never forget is us going to the corner shop and Sakina was like, I really need, what was it, deodorant or razor? It was a razor, I'm pretty sure, yeah. yeah. You're like, I really need a razor. How do I explain that? How do I say that? I'm like, Sakina, let's go back to the basics and you just show them what you need. <laughs> so we went up to the lady and I was just literally like, and she, she was like, and then she goes to the deodorant and she's like, this? I was like, she's like, I'm like, no. And then we have to share with our legs. Yes, also, our like, legs. And then legs, she's like, yeah? like, oh. And then she showed us. And even after that, it was like we were besties. Like she was so happy to see us. And they would like to laugh because of that experience whenever they saw us. But we, we felt like we were part of the country. We were locals. And it's probably because we stayed in that same space for like more than a week. We, I think a lot of people go to Azerbaijan, very off topic, but a lot of people go to Azerbaijan for three days, two days, and they leave. Like it's not a, a vacation spot where people stay for. And also we stayed, yeah, we stayed in like a very local area, although there was a lot of hostels, but like locals were like living across the road and next to next door, which was nice. I was watching, I'm just going to plug your Instagram. I was watching your highlight reel about Azerbaijan and you're like, the ladies at the corner shop knows who we are. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, such, such a nice feeling knowing that if, I know it's going to sound bad, but like if we had gone missing or if we needed something or if that we could go to that corner shop and they would be able to help us. I don't know, like also feel like we stood out so much because we were there so long yeah you know, like all these people do they live here now like <laughs> if we had to appear the news they'd be like we know who they are exactly they are those girls. exactly you know? which i i really love and that's why it wasn't a question again but i think we really try to travel very locally like we don't go to the big high-end shops and you know the we go we visit the tourist attractions but we don't just do that we do that and then we go to the mom and pop shops and we do this and like we find out from the locals the place to go and then we go we make it a like a mission to go there instead of just to the main areas in a country or in the place that we're staying <laughs> what is the craziest thing that happened on one of your trips there are many crazy things which country <laughs> Every trip is a crazy thing that happens. As I said, which country? <laughs> what is like the first thing that comes to your mind? And then I'll try and think of something different. Taken five. Hmm? Taken five. Please explain the story. I don't think anyone's going to get it from that reference. <laughs> you know, I told to tell you that. So we all know the movie Taken, Kidnappings, you know, yada yada. So we rock up in Azerbaijan we've missed our connecting flight from Turkey mm -hmm. we're in Turkey's airport for 15 hours or something ridiculous okay we missed our flight so obviously our bags in Azerbaijan we're not then because we are so prepared in life we organize transport from the airport to our hostel mm -hmm. in Azerbaijan mm -hmm. So then we get to the hostel, I mean, we get to the airport and first of all, we've been security checked like thoroughly, like who are you and why are you here? And then we get out. Now, obviously we see three names on the board. It's my name, Lisa's name, and it's her brother's name. And we're like, okay, obviously this is the guy that we organized with. You know, that just makes sense. <laughs> so we walk to him, we're like, yo, what's up? How are you? We need a bank so we can pay you you know or like an exchange rate or whatever homeboy doesn't not a word you should, i'm like money you know bank atm nothing anyway we managed to get there whatever so we only like what's this exchange the amount we needed hmm. cool. and we just followed this man and i'm just like okay it's my car cool cool he has your bags in the boot get in the car we like get in blah 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 and this man's not saying a word. We're like, why? And we're like, I'm like, what's this man's name? So I check on my phone and I'm like, yo, Omar, like, 
almost just not keep lying to us. <laughs> awkward. I don't feel why we do this, but because it's, it's not like he understands English in any case. So we just convert to Afrikaans. So reason I and when you are talk, talking in Afrikaans, and we were like, what is going on? Why is this man not talking to us? It's so awkward when he's speaking in front because I don't know, like, yeah, I so say you need to talk to him because that is your designated position for doing things. <laughs> We're like when you ask this man, yo Alma, like, do you know where we're going? Hmm. Because I hope he know, like he has no GPS on him. Like there's no like turn right. There's nothing, you know? So we can't like check that the destination is the name of the hostel we're going in. And then he is trying to talk to this man, you know, that is <laughs> I think he is the most international out of all of us because like he went to international school, lived, you know, and all of that stuff. And this man is driving the car and he turns to me, to me and then he goes, me no Alma. And we all like, oh, we are. When I tell you my heart dropped as soon as he said that, and I'm sitting behind Alma, Sikina's next to me, we're in the back seat and my brother's in the front seat. My heart dropped when he said that. And I remember we were driving on a highway and I was just thinking to myself, how do I get out of this vehicle? How do I safely get all three of us out of this vehicle as soon as possible? Because this man is not the man we thought was picking us up. And all of a sudden we're, we're driving off and we were driving on the highway for a long time and, and we don't have data. Our phones aren't working. We have no way to contact anyone. And eventually we're in the city now and he's going like straight, left, right, yeah, up, down. Teresa is not communicating this inner turmoil. Everything's in my head. Teresa's sitting and freaking out. And we need it out like little puppies. You're looking at us and like, nice lights. Oh, look at that building. And Teresa's like, I'm like, why are these people even talking? Don't they realize we're in danger? Can't they see we're in danger? They're talking about, oh, look at the lights. Look at that building. I'm like, we're in danger. Eventually, all of a sudden, we start following a car and the car is also going straight left, right, up, down. Oh, and I was like, yeah. and the car comes yeah. out and we start following this car. And I was like, what is going on right now? I can't, I was like, I'm too young. I can't die right now. I have a whole life ahead of me. Eventually he stops the car and he's like, I don't even know if he said it and he gets out. I'm like, is this it? It's so dark because I think we landed at like one or two in the morning. I want to say like late, like very late. Yeah, it was very, very late. And so everything is dark and there's no lights. And I'm just like, what do I do? What do I do? And Sakina's like, you just pass the car, hey? The whole city is under scaffolding and like sheets of green because they're reconstructing the whole city for the F1 Grand Prix. Of course, we don't know this when we get there because who knows anything about Azerbaijan, right? So this, he stops and the car stops. I mean, the car stops and then he stops and he goes, we hear. And we're like, okay. So you told me to get up first. So I'm like, because yeah. this man like, gets up in the front car. So I get up and this man gives me one look and he starts speaking in Arabic. And I'm like, honey, <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> no. The, in the front car, a man comes out. Right? Like, I can't even remember. I, I literally was so choked yes, out by the event. Yeah. Sorry, we're talking of each other. So, Alma then gets out of the front car that we learned. We saw Alma. Um, and because we must have flight, he sent someone else to do it because that time didn't work for him, etc., etc. But I, I, Alma thinks I'm fast Arab. Like, <laughs> say, Alan was killed, Sakina. And I know that much Arabic, like conversational Arabic. So I'm just like trying to wing my way as well. And then I was like, can you speak English? We're from South Africa. And then I said, cool. And he, he, he didn't, ends up only talking to me. He doesn't even acknowledge Reza and my new existence. Why would he? And he's like, and he's like, you and me are friends. You must phone me if you want to go anywhere now. Because he was so expensive. He was actually so expensive. And like, I think. We could have just Ubered, but we didn't know. We didn't know. We didn't have doctor. We didn't have SIM cards. Yeah, there was, that was the only option, honestly. That was truly the only option for that moment. Yeah, that is one of the craziest things. If you want to know more, 
well, some things we just have right. to do to ourselves because a lot of crazy things happen on our trips and we can't share all of those on the interwebs. We'll share to you one-on-one. You can buy us supper and we'll share the stories. <laughs> I mean, um, we'll have a socially distanced walk and I'll yes. tell you everything. Yes, definitely. What's your craziest experience? What comes to mind? Let's hear. I think my craziest moment was definitely being woken up by a loud bang and knock on my door at five in the morning in a Tanzanian Mangula village hostel hotel thing place. I, when we were in, when we, so we went to Tanzania and we stayed with a family in Mangula, which is a small village about eight and a half hours away from Dar es Salaam. And we only knew one family there, Mama and Baba, who became like our family. And then we also met one of the elders that was in the village as well. Um, And this elder felt like he needed to show us everything. He needed to introduce us to everyone, that we should only be hanging out with him and that he is the be all and end all of Mangula. But we loved Mama and Baba. Like that's why we came, that's why we went was for Mama and Baba. And so we tried to actively ignore or try to actively avoid avoid hanging out with the elder but the one afternoon he said to the one afternoon we had the remember that afternoon we had lunch at his house and did that happen before or after this before we had lunch at his house and he at his lunch which was already like another crazy story that we shall not mention, but we had lunch at his house, which was fine. And then he said, tomorrow, I'm going to pick you up from your hotel and then we will go and I'll introduce you to this other lady and her child. And we are like, we don't really want to, but we we had already said no a couple of times by then. So we said, okay, tomorrow is fine. Now, when we say tomorrow, I don't mean five in the morning. Like, I don't mean you need to <laughs> wake me up to go to this place, especially because the, the village is not that big. So it's not like I need to travel far to go to the person's house. Anyways, this morning, this elder came to our, in our hotel, I guess you would call it. I had my own room and I was the first room in the hallway. And then there was another room next to me. And then it was Sakina and her brother. They went up their own room and I I remember like being woken up by banging and loud conversation like the the police was at my door and I remember like jumping up because I was like oh my goodness what's going on and the first thing I think is how am I gonna get myself out of the situation yet again I'm like I'm panicking I'm the only one in the room I'm actually stressing and I go and I hear that it's his his voice I'm like okay I know him but I'm like why is he here so early I call Sakina she's half asleep but she eventually wakes up because you also heard because he went to so he was knocking on my door then he like walked down knocked on Sakina's door and none of us would open up and I think that was the craziest thing because being woken up by someone wanting to speak to you an ungodly time for unnecessary business Honestly, you can miss me with that one. I was so upset, especially because we heard the story of how the police comes. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. The police comes and checks the hotel up, like, out as a guest, and, like, if there's anything illegal going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I was just like, it is so dark. We don't even have windows in this hotel room. <laughs> and that is here yeah, so early. And all I can think of is I don't have any pants on. I was just like, <laughs> what is going on? And my brother is also none the wiser. And I said, because everything you can hear, you can hear through the doors. It's not mm. very side room. I told my brother, like, don't move. Even the creak of your bed. <laughs> or telling that you're awake. I no. Uh, like, I got, I got out of bed. I stood at the door. And I was like, I'm not opening up this door. I refuse to open up this door. I don't care who it is. It's like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. But that's the thing is, like, with another question we got is how do we stay safe in foreign countries while we're traveling 
And honestly, I want to say, first and foremost, by the grace of God, because he is leading us, guiding us, showing us the way, bringing real angels, real life angels to journey with us on our vacations, on our holidays, on our missions, on our trips. There's no way, it's not just us. But I also noticed, like Sakina and I, because we're women, we're so hyper aware of our surroundings. We're hyper aware of our senses of everything. Like we'll walk past something and we notice everything because if we walk past that again and it's not there or that person has moved, we need to know because we're literally foreigners in this country. And so I think keeping safe is just knowing your surroundings, making sure that all your belongings are as close to your body as possible. And just being aware, don't be like, don't think, oh, I'm in a foreign country, so I don't have to pay attention or I don't have to be, you know, vigilant. You still have to do all those things, but you need to act normal. We act so normal. We act like we're part of the country. We act like we're local in the country. And as soon as we get to the country, we learn some of the, the language so that we can speak to the foreigners and we try to make friends as soon as possible um, so that we we can you know flow into the society we can mix into the society yeah. better as you said that it just it makes me lull because as women first of all we, women in south africa so we know how to kind of try to stay safe because exactly. it's so dangerous <laughs> but also i think that's a massive factor because my brother and your brother none the wiser don't care whatever no, will happen will happen reveal everything to a complete stranger in Azerbaijan the first thing these people ask is where do you live and I'm like why like (laughs) that's actually because we want to know and I'm South African and I'm like this man's gonna come rob me at night (laughs) kill me murder me no and then like we met the very questionable people one evening and Reese's brother is just telling this man everything. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm so glad we speak another language. Mm-hmm. I was like, I really hope no. Like, like, please stop now. Like, you know, it's, he doesn't have to know anything. He's dodgy, you know. He can be la la la. But like, still. But he never acted. We're like, we're like, Renier, how you mean? Renier, hope. Like, we're like, we're like laughing, but we're like, <laughs> That's honestly so funny. Also, like, we, Sakina and I, we always walk next to each other or sit next to each other. And so if there's anything that's dodgy or something, we make eye contact or we'll like touch each other's leg or something. We're really good with cues. And also what I miss, Sakina picks up. What Sakina might miss, I pick up. So we have a really good traveling connection in that sense that we can reel things in and be like, okay, this is what I share. This is what I don't share. Also, another thing is we, and it's a very important thing. I really want people to understand is that we care about the country's laws and rules. And I know it sounds silly, but we're not going to go to a country and break a rule or go to a country and now we're smoking weed or we're buying illegal things because we're guests in that country. And I don't want to be stuck in that country. I want to go home. And I think a lot of people go overseas and they do whatever they want things that they would never do in South Africa I'm like you did this for what like why are you doing this <laughs> just whatever you would do at home do that overseas but like tone it down like a lot of notches <laughs> even the thing like that I wasn't aware of takes me back to 2015 is like I'm so I used to live with well I have friends but like showing the middle finger was like their way of showing love. And then I went Abu Dhabi and I nearly, I was like, and then Risa was like, that is illegal. And I was like, oh no, yeah. I'm sorry. So I was like, so I think ever since then we've been like very like, Conscious. this is the law. This is not the law, you know, kind of thing. What has been your favorite trip together? Together, our favorite, my favorite trip was Azerbaijan, hands down. We speak about it so often. That's so funny. Like, I love this so much. And yours? I would say Madagascar. Really? Yeah. 
I learned so oh. much about you in, in Madagascar. And also because it was a work trip, also because it was a mission, also because we had to stay in the same like room for two weeks and it was just the two of us and we had to depend on one another and exactly. we, like solo trip. yeah so it was our first solo trip in a sense that there weren't in there was no one to no family members or anything it was just the two of us who knew each other and we really had to work together and you know checking in on one another and listen to one another and like give each other spaces. I think we also learned a lot about in the future, how we're going to travel through that first trip. Because we realized, okay, if they, if one of us is not feeling it, instead of pushing the person to do it, just, just do your own thing or just let them sleep or whatever the case may be, um, which has helped us a lot in our future trips interesting i've never thought about that i'm very mm -hmm. it's going to play in my mind like the whole time but <laughs> of course <laughs> buy gifts for people while you're traveling so i'm a big i don't know why like no one's paying for me to go overseas but i'm a big like i need to buy everyone in my family something at least but i'm stopping that i was literally looking at the fridge this morning and it's only like little magnets that we used to get and i was like i'm not going to I'm either only going to buy Magnus from now on it or nothing at all because I have a very big family and every member of this family thinks they're entitled to get something and that needs to stop. I never buy myself something. Like honestly, like Risa had to force me to buy something in Paris on our last day there. <laughs> she was like, you've been dreaming about this makeup product. You've been talking about it for so long. And now you need to spend your last money. Like you've bought so many other things for other people. Like you need to spend your last money on it. So I did, and I'm very happy with my purchase goal. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Um, yeah, we have other people in my family. <clears throat> I'm not going to say who. But they don't buy anything. They buy nothing. No, not going to. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, magnets are definitely the best thing to buy your family members it's just such an easy thing to buy it doesn't take up a lot of space it is the cheapest thing to buy them as well and it's the one thing that if you go to their house you'll always see it like it's the one thing that is rewarding so it reminds you of your trip every time you go to their house and you know they're going to use it what place had the kindest people sure not belgium <laughs> <laughs> Sure. I think people have been kind, like really, like very kind everywhere we went. Mm. Obviously, Abu Dhabi's your parents is like the kindest. Um, Madagascar, like Filana, literally we, we, we became family. It yeah. sounds so weird because like, you know, become family with everyone, but like <laughs> legitimately, we still like hang out, like not hang out in Madagascar, but we still like look at like follow each other's lives on social media or like Sarubidi, all of them jason and i literally spoke this morning <laughs> yeah, um great. azerbaijan so kind still in contact with a lot of people i don't think we paid for any suppers <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's how kind we were mama and baba still get voice notes from mapachas like tanzania so kind Mozambique. I mean, there was no connection, eh, to be honest. Some like, the people, some of the people we met there. Just Jason, Jason. He's, we still talk. Mm -hmm. um, he like replies to like some statuses if you in it, you know, because he's so in love with you. <laughs> and then uh, we didn't meet anyone in Amsterdam, Rotterdam. Rotterdam we did. Yeah, but they were nice. They were very nice, funny. Yeah. But that started and ended there kind of situation. Yeah, we really, really nice fun. people. Paris is funny, eh? That group of guys. Yes. Having <laughs> conversations about aeronautical engineering, like what? So why? It's amazing the people you meet on your travels because you go to this place not expecting anything, and then you meet people and you're like how are you alive how are you in my presence how are you yeah like make this 
how oh, because it wouldn't necessarily happen here in South Africa, but it's happening on our trips, the people we're meeting, and they're not people that we would genuine, genuinely go up to and introduce ourselves to. But now that we're like on a trip, uh, it just happens. We just meet. Which says a lot about us though, I think. It does. Maybe we should talk to people here. <laughs> we should. I think we should be more open to who we talk to in public because we don't, when we do go out, we don't just make conversation with a random person which I wanted to touch on was the confidence that we get when we're on a trip. When I'm on a trip, I'll talk to anyone. I'll make friends with anyone. I will, you know, walk five kilometers just to save money, you know, but at home, me, five kilometers to save a five rand. No, thank you, dear. No, thank you. So it's just, it's very different the people you are at home and the person you are it's very different the person you are at home and the person you are on holiday. But at the same time, I feel like Cape Town is so small. Like, I'm not going to say, if I say hi, I'm Sakina, they'll be like, oh, Sakina from bloody blah, 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 blah. Uh, like, they already know my story. I can't reinvent myself. So I think you get to be whoever you want to be, especially like with your outfits, even your yeah. makeup. was so shiny on our one trip. And we were like, <laughs> who is what because i'm a matte queen you know mm-hmm. and i'm so shiny and glowing and i'm living my life like i'm a like a, a movie star <laughs> like an influence wild it is <laughs> but it's the best wild. like you get to be whoever you want to be because no one knows you like people are for example i know he's been speaking a lot about azerbaijan on this video which was not supposed to be but for example in azerbaijan we were like celebrities because if no one else looked like us because that says a lot. No one else looks like us. So one day we went to the Maiden Tower and the Maiden Tower is, this, it's like a tourist attraction, but you go up this like tower all the way to the top and then it's like a, a scenic a deck. rooftop view. Yeah. yeah. So then you get to see the whole of Azerbaijan from the top. That is my, my thing. Whenever I go to a country or a place, I want to go to like a similar thing. That- yes the highest point so we went and we were just looking around and there were like little kids like it looked like a school a a class had come and there was like a few tourists or a few people just standing around all of a sudden this lady comes up to us and she's like can but she didn't speak English you know she's speaking Azerbaijani and trying to like show us what she wants (laughs) so basically she wants to take a photo of us not with hear me clearly she wants to take a photo of us not with us <laughs> so and like we were like oh okay we'll take a photo of you they're like no 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 i'm like oh together no 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 <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a photo of the three of us somewhere i'll post the photo here of what we look like just roaming around in Azerbaijan. A lot of people have seen our faces. We have no idea who, but that was, that experiences like that don't happen in Cape Town. They only happen when we're overseas because obviously people here know. But then also in Madagascar, I look local. In Tanzania, I look local. In Abu Dhabi, I look local. (laughs) Next question is, when are we planning to travel again and where to next? Want to answer that? Well, as soon as the borders open, bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. I'm out of here. I, I'm on the next flight. My money is ready to be spent on a ticket. No, I'm joking. I I really do want to travel again soon. Hopefully, hopefully this year again would be great. If not, as soon as the borders allow us, as soon as we're able to as soon as it's safe enough for us to go my reasoning is obviously I want to go see my parents and it's easier for me to visit them than they come than them coming to South Africa so yeah and I know everyone's saying wait till a vaccine but science doesn't happen overnight so that could be forever I mean, if it did we wouldn't be in a six month lockdown exactly and still continuing. So my thing is, as soon as I can, I'll definitely get on a plane. Like, 
I don't want to live in fear. I'll definitely like even if I had to wear a whole suit out as much. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I didn't want to say that because I don't want to disrespect anyone that has to wear that like as a doctor. So you can buy a lot. Um, like they was- <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I was just like, let's, let's not say anything that's going to upset anyone. But I do want to go see my parents. I really miss them. And I think they miss me a lot. And so Abu Dhabi would be the place I go next. How about you? I mean, I'd love to go to Abu Dhabi. But if the borders are open and my budget approves, I'm going to go to Turkey. Yeah. I'm going to be on the up. I'm obsessed. <laughs> Tea drama. <laughs> and that's the thing so after Abu Dhabi I definitely go to South Korea because I'm obsessed with South Korea at the moment like obsessed with South Korea I would hands down go to South Korea if I could uh after Abu Dhabi and then maybe I'll meet you in Turkey because Turkey Turkey looks good uh it looks really good the people look nice the people are very attractive. At least, I mean, they are watching drama, so obviously the celebrities. Like, wow. That's why wow. I keep trying to remind myself when I watch Korean dramas. I'm like, you do know that these, this is celebrities. You do know that this is like 10% of the population. Not everyone's going to look like, and I'm like, Risa, don't just. But don't. at the same time, have you seen our celebrities? Like, they are not the cream of the crop. <laughs> so... Maybe that's just your average looking person in Korea. That's South Africa, so who knows, eh? Who knows? Because our celebrities, I don't think we have a celebrity culture in South Africa in general, but our celebrities will walk next to you in like a shopping mall and you're like, you like, what that? You say, look like us. Yes. So hopefully, not Korea because they have like a whole idol policy. Yeah. But like, maybe places just look like normal people. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Obsessed. I'm sorry. Yeah. No offense to our local celebrities, love y'all. Don't watch anything. I don't even know you, but (laughs) (laughs) let's see. What's one place you would never go again? Belgium. It was a bad experience. Maybe you'll go and you'll. So old, and like the more I read about it afterwards. mm. Okay, not not a fan. That's okay. You? I I don't have one. You know me. I'm like, I'll go anywhere again. But like the thing is, you have, like, if Belgium was, is the worst trip together, you still have family there. So you still have an incentive mm. to go. Mm. Whereas I'm like. Yeah, which is fun. I'm, yeah. I'm going to wait it out in Rotterdam and I'll meet you somewhere else. <laughs> well, if we're going to Rotterdam, I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'll stay right there. <laughs> what has been your favorite meal so far on a trip? Sure, that's like a loaded question. I mean, well, you know, the question is, what's your favorite meal in each country? But I think that's going to be a bit long. So, you don't want to do that. I could I do that. I can't think of in every place. Can yeah. you? Okay, okay. Let's ask that again. So, what is what is your favorite meal in every country? Okay, so. The favorite meal I had in Abu Dhabi was at buffet we went to at the Hilton. I think the amazing. Like, yeah, we had the buffet and like we just ate everything. Um, I was like that lamb, of lamb, amazing, love it. I have a whole vlog somewhere on my channel. We did a Azerbaijan a shawarma that that's a white mayonnaise sauce that's on the shawarma. You can get it at Syrian in Cape Town. I'm just gonna plug them, support them, it. amazing. Tastes very similar. Like afterwards, like I went there. And I'm like, oh my gosh, amazing. Then we went to oh, Madagascar. My favorite meal of all time is something is unmatched by Madagascan rice. Like I love rice. Mm. Malagasy rice. <laughs> I literally had a meal. I had a banana and rice. That was a meal because I couldn't eat the meat. Yeah. So I had a banana. It was so nice. Um, and then Madagascar, Azerbaijan, Tanzania, Ugali is pop, basically. Riza is yeah. not a fan. And that like cassava, what did we have for breakfast? Was it cassava donuts? I think, that thing. I think so. That was liquor. And that beans with the coconut in. 
very good very highly recommend what's wrong what you're looking at no i'm just thinking of thinking about these meals that you enjoyed <laughs> you know what your meal was in tanzania let's be honest i can't really talk about it <laughs> my mouth is watering <laughs> mozambique coconut because i feel like that's the only thing we ate there <laughs> i don't remember any meals i we ate there okay in mozambique yeah no nothing comes to mind wow that's a bag like a plastic plastic packet of coconut full of coconut there was no year look i don't think i had <laughs> did we eat it um, yeah okay. everything i buy from the i think i tried it but i didn't love it oh no i loved it loved it loved it um and then um mozambique and then did you say it's then, yeah that's warma oh yes yes and then the netherlands that fish burger had in amsterdam also oh, good oh, so good gains are only oh gains mayonnaise and chips apparently it's a national dish i can give five stars that was delicious <laughs> uh, and then paris was that turkish meal they had in that turkish mm-hmm. restaurant yeah. oh mm, yeah i know that was that yeah was that. and you for me paris was the snails Belgium was the potato chips, but the sauce, I love the sauce. The chips, I was like, it's just chips. I think that's no, the second no. thing. I was like, it's my net chips, but it was nice. I wouldn't give it yeah. five stars, but it was nice, but I, the sauce was nice in Belgium. And then also the meal we had at Ariel's grandparents was good. I know you couldn't eat it, but it was really good. Um, in Rotterdam, it was that ramen and that matcha latte that I had. <gasps> Oh, that matcha latte was so, so good. So, so good. I literally, it was so delicious. In Amsterdam, what do we eat in Amsterdam? Also, also, sorry. Also, we cannot forget to mention in Paris, that salmon that I had in Paris. The things I would do just to go back and have that salmon every single day. That's why I want to go back to Paris, is for that salmon alone. <laughs> um, Tanzania, oh, Mama and Mama's, Mama's food hit the spot every night. Those beans, I don't know what was in her beans, but the beans coconut. were... Was it coconut was coconut beans. It was coconut. I was, I was watching a vlog or something, or highlights. She grated coconut in the beans. It was so good. It was so good. The beans were so... Beans, guys. Beans. Mama's beans. Mama's rice. Mama's meat. We had meat one day out of the two weeks. And I was just like... Sakina was like... Like, You know, like, it was so good. And then also, another thing Mama made was... You know, those small, tiny fish? Like, the, the, the small fishes? Daga. Yeah, she fried them where they were so crispy. When I say they were crispy, it hit every taste bud, every spot. The things I would do for Mama's food was delicious. Mozambique, when we went to that restaurant in Mozambique, that was liquor. I don't know what I had, but just thinking about the restaurant, that was good food. I can always eat the, like two vegetarian options. Yeah, I know, unfortunately. And also, the food in Mozambique from the hotel that we got, um, like, I can't remember. throughout the mission, like, the dinners were really, really nice. And in Azerbaijan, shawarma all day, every day. I ate a shawarma three times a day. That was my main meal because I'm trying to save coin. I'm trying to save the money. So I ate shawarma. And also the meal, the meal, the meal we had in Azerbaijan that cost us 800 rand and we didn't even know. We didn't know, but it cost us a good 800 rand and we nearly died. But the food, the barbecue, the braai hit the spot. And that was the only <laughs> fat meal we had in Azerbaijan because after that we were like, are you mad? We were like, are you mad? Are you crazy? And also the pomegranate juice in Azerbaijan, highly recommend you try. Pomegranate juice in Madagascar. Why can't I remember? In Madagascar, we had really good 
food. The yeah. morning buffets were incredible. Incredible. And I can't remember like a specific meal, but I think in general I was a happy camper every night. And every we were day. always fed like yeah. egg rolls at lunch, like three egg rolls you can have, whatever. Exactly. For supper that restaurant place with um Vincenzo and yeah, Helen. That was a great it was good all around 10 out of 10 in matter we were all like we never complained in matter because it was so good and then abu dhabi my home my country <laughs> i would definitely say pinkberry yogurt is pinkberry ice cream yogurt whatever it's called the bomb the best thing i've ever had Overrated. Overrated. Uh, no ma'am this is my channel Ma'am, <laughs> exit through that door behind you because that is the best, best ever. Wow. And also, anytime I go to a buffet in Abu Dhabi, it is worth the money. Food's always good. And obviously, my parents also cook really nice food. So, shame. We'll give them a shout out to mom and dad. You can also. 100% the best. Then, let's not forget about IKEA. IKEA! Ikea salmon in Abu Dhabi wins my heart every time. You know, you know the salmon you made actually slaps hard. Is it? Me? You made it? Yeah, yes, you I made it. it. Of course. Thank you. I think I might buy salmon for my birthday because that will, that will be bomb. <laughs> That'll make me happy. <laughs> okay, yeah. last question um, that I want us to talk about and chat about. And then I think we might have to do another video just to go further in if you're interested, if you're keen. But it's to talk about our budget and how much money we spend on the holidays and how we, I think this is a whole video. Like obviously people say tips for budgeting, but the budget, the saving, the planning, I think that could all be a different video. But let's just talk about how much does each of these trips cost us? So firstly, firstly, we have to say that Mozambique and Madagascar, they were missions. So we didn't pay for any flights or any accommodation or any food. We only paid for our visa in Madagascar. <laughs> Excuse me? And supper. We have to pay for our own yeah, suppers. We paid for our own suppers here and there. That was it. And then Abu Dhabi, we stayed with my family and it was no was, expenses. there was no expenses there. <laughs> and then for the Netherlands, Belgium and Paris trip, our pa my parents paid for accommodation and for a lot Basically. of... Basically. The trip we paid for like two. <laughs> Three. Two. Two. Yes. Azerbaijan and Tanzania. Tanzania. I'd say they cost roughly around 25,000 25, 25, rand. Yeah. Yeah. Because your, your flight to both places is about 10k. Mm -hmm. And um, it depends on your local, your, your house, your, what's it called? Your accommodation mm -hmm. situation. So in Tanzania, we lived in like a five star in the village, which I would call very basic. It would be like literally a bed, a like flat bed toilet you have to squat in. Mm. And like that was the, the best that they can give. And I was very thankful for that. So that costed like 50 rand a night. And because I'm cheap, I was like, my brother and I are going to share a room. So like, yeah. I didn't get a separate room. Um, and then in Azerbaijan, went on a hostel and that worked out to like 80 rand a night. Hmm. I think people think, people always like think we pay thousands of rand a night for accommodation because we like to look like we're living the best lives. We are, but on a budget, like it's yeah, possible. Sure. To yeah. And that's the thing, like you don't have to go to aesthetically pleasing places overseas or fancy hotels hostels are great like give me a hostel any day you always say like as long as the kitchen and the bathroom is clean um and the bedding looks you know the room looks good that's fine 
I'm not picky. As long as there's a place for me to rest, uh, as long as there's a place for me to rest my head, and it's safe, and you know everything's no alright. There's no cockroaches, and and the reviews are good, and there's internet. There's nothing to complain about really. But we don't have like we spent a lot of our money on the plane tickets, obviously, and then on experiences. So for example, we'll go on tours, we'll go to museums, we'll, I don't know, what else do but we I, do? But I also want to say there's a lot of like free walking tours. Mm -hmm. And which we try Google. to do, we try to do a lot of free stuff. So we, we literally Google what is free in this country or what is free in this city. And then we try and do free things as much as possible. And yeah, so like you can budget your trip, but I would say twenty five thousand, right? But the thing is also, it's not like we have that twenty five thousand rand and then we book a trip. <laughs> we have our ten to twelve k saved up, and then we're like, or oh, eight to twelve k saved up, and we're like, okay, I can buy the ticket now. And then you save, 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 save. You don't buy anything. You don't eat out. You do nothing for work. And you work and you side hustle and you work and you save and you don't go out to eat. You don't drive anywhere. You don't pay any Uber fees. Exactly. You just save every single penny. We've had conversations. I'm like, Lisa, we can't do that. We're saving, remember? Like, just come over if you want to and sleep. <laughs> like, you can't, well, we can't want, well, we'll go to free stuff so it'll still look like we're doing something exciting but we're literally walking around the mall we're literally at the beach we're literally just walking in a fancy road because you no know, you still want to do stuff we're not saying stay in your house and save 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 you can still live but i mean you have a goal to work towards and i think once we get on the plane it's not like we have 20k saved up or 10k saved up, but we have enough to get by for each day to feed us as, and also i'm a cheap person travel you're so, you're so, no 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 you're a cheap eater you I'm will eat the same meal every day five times a day so we my brother your brother and i are like no we need some to switch it up yeah okay for me food is important <laughs> you will eat, eat anything yeah <laughs> like, I'm also, with that. but i will say like where you don't so obviously do your research beforehand and all of that stuff but don't be um frugal don't be frugal when you like booking tours mm. especially if those tours hit the spots all the spots you want to see because it's probably cheaper to go in one tour and see all these places and get information and drive there and they pick you up and drop you off and you get a meal rather pay for that than try to do it yourself yes because you can save money yes any other budgeting tips tricks you're gonna be prepared to have no money when you come back <laughs> like legitimately no money and also like in terms of budgeting um i think that it's also important to note like again know the person traveling with but like you don't need to buy two lunches every lunch time buy one big lunch mm. split it share it you know if you like before the trip and you need certain things, be like, do you have an extra this? Do you have a who's packing the shampoo? Who's packing the you know? Have fun and spend the money. I mean, I'm not really great at telling you how to budget. I think also money. another thing that you touched on was the fact that when we went on our Meta trip and on our Mozambique trip, and we knew that, and we knew that we were obviously had to pay for suppers and stuff we packed in snacks and we packed in like things that we might want and also if you're at a buffet if you have a, a free breakfast buffet you better take some eggs and you better take some bread rolls and just take it with you you don't know i don't even think you need to sneak it out at this stage just take those bread rolls take those butters they come in handy later on at lunch when you're starving and you don't want to spend money you can always just eat your bread roll there's nothing wrong with eating that bread roll even if it's like a day old and it's like at the bottom of your bag <laughs> on a mission a bread roll will hit the spot when you're hungry I, also, I think it's important like a jungle bar goes a long way yes before you try, buy a pack of jungle bars buy a box put it in your bag one a day if you don't eat it you don't eat it but mm. if you like 
it like if you're so hungry and you're like, oh, I just need to wait like an hour until we get can yeah. get your food. The jungle bar, you have like such a lifesaver. <laughs> also, um, if you go to a place where water isn't safe, so obviously we went to a lot of like places where water isn't safe. Water gets so boring, personally. Water gets so boring. <laughs> Buy a sachet of like mixed drinky mm. can it's called buy it, throw it in. Mm. It helps. Makes a difference. It does. Yeah. Okay. I think that's everything for today. Thank you so much, Sakina, for chatting with me today. It was lots of fun reminiscing about our travels. I know there's some questions that we missed, but maybe we'll answer them on a part two because there's always more questions. We always want to talk more about our trips. Um, so please like and subscribe the video. I'm going to link all of Sakina's details and all of the videos of all of our trips because she has blogged everything. Um, I'll link it down below, the playlist and so forth. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Sakina, for being here. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.